Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and thank God for what God is doing in our lives in this season. Thank God for His Word. I've told you this, every time God sends His Word to you, it's an expression of His love to you. Remember John said, we love Him. We love him. Because, because he first loved us. And in responding to his love, which he gave to us first by giving us his word, we keep his word. That is how we show that we love him. Jesus said it, if you love me, keep my words. Praise God. So listen, I know it's going to be a great week because God is surely going to give us his word every day of this week. Like I've always told you, take this broadcast seriously. Now, I know I receive messages, you know, from people who actually say, look, your, your messages is what we use um, to disciple ourselves in the word of the Lord. I know. And to such, I, I, I say, God bless you. Um, thank you for trusting me with your life. <laughs> Praise God. I see that. Uh, I see it like that. And that's why I'm very, very careful how I communicate God's word. I just want to communicate what he has given to me to say. So I know this is a great week. And before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready? Let's call for that daily bread. Release your faith right now. Expect a miracle. Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now then, last week I was sharing some things with you. You know, God has been talking to us about the opening of the book. He told us from the beginning of this month, he says, I am opening the book. Now, opening the book, according to Revelation chapter 5, opening the book means opening his plan for your life, opening his real plan for the earth, that unedited version. You see, because what God has said is surely what's going to come to pass. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be subtracted to it from it. See, because before any event started happening physically on the earth, God has finished everything. He's finished his creation. He's finished everything till the last thing that's going to happen on the earth. He has finished it. That's why he wrote a book. In that book is written everything that will ever be done on the earth in fulfillment to his will and his purpose. And the beautiful thing about this is all these things are attached to names. See? Now, it's amazing. I want you to take note of this. It's amazing when you study the book of Revelation. Revelation tells us that the book was written before the world began, before the foundation of the world. That's when God wrote the book. But then the book is surely going to be open at the end of everything. Isn't that wonderful? Now that is also to tell you that the book of Revelation is not the end of everything. It's actually the beginning of everything. Because when that book is open, then judgment, which has already begun on the earth, you will begin to see different levels of judgment. And those judgments is for one reason, to establish the real purpose of God on the earth. So for example, when you begin to see wars, uh, take note of this, that God is mindful of every human being. He is. 
he is. Make no mistakes about this. Now, there, th these are things God have done before. It's not something new that he's about to do. These are things God have done before. God knows clearly how to separate the righteous from the unrighteous. And that's why when, when you begin to hear wars and rumors of wars, people get scared and say, hey, 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 no, if you are the righteous one, God's surely going to protect you. God's surely going to save you. Those that will perish are two group of people, the sinners. And then those, even though they love God, they refuse to heed to his command at that moment. Because see, God will always come through with his word. That's why I've been telling you, I've been encouraging you, this is the time to practice, not just practice, live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You want to take a journey. I mean, these are the days, especially in our country, Nigeria. These are the days you, you find the, the embassies flooded with several people that want to leave. They want to leave the country. But make sure you're leaving is according to God's plan for your life. Don't just take your bag and say, I'm leaving. Uh, there are better opportunities out there. Hey, yes, you may think that way, but ultimately, what is the Lord saying to you? If you don't hear the voice of God, then you might just be walking right into darkness and, and so terrible that will that darkness be for you. So whatever decision you're taking, I mean, take some time out to fast and pray. The Bible says, he that seeks the Lord will find him. It's as simple as that. There is no way you will tell me, oh, I've taken time to fast and pray. And then I, and now, sometimes your mind can be so presumptuous. You know, you, you've already made up your mind. You're dwelling on it. You're meditating on it. But you see, the taking out time to pray and acknowledging God in that your thoughts Father, this is really what I want to do, but I, I, I just say, let me check it out with you. Please, in all sincerity, what do you think? Do you, is this what plan for me? Or is this what you want me to do? If it's not, I'm ready to share with you. If you are sincere before God, he will come true to you. He will come true to you. Don't, use, don't just use signs and judge. No. If he is God, there are things, no matter the signs you see, you're going to enjoy favor in that journey, that thing you're about to do. You're going to see provision, then you're going to see favor. Now, that's how you judge and you tell that God's hand is on this thing. First, the word will come. Now, because you believe the word, you step out. See, hearing the word doesn't just mean you get up and start running. No, you hear the word, then you go with him. See, now remember what he said, I will go before you and I will make the crooked path straight. So you look out for him when you start the journey. Everything, you want to take a business decision, the same thing. When things are just not working, you've prayed, you've done everything, it's still not working. Relax. Relax. It's not like God did not hear you. It's not like God didn't care. Relax. Because when you're dealing with God, patience is surely involved but when you start doing i have to take this decision now 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 no no you will get into trouble like that your decision should be simple if god doesn't engineer me if god doesn't tell me to go if god doesn't command me i'm sorry there's nothing i can do about it and wait for him but he's not speaking when he finally speaks the bible says you will mount up with wings like the eagles <laughs> Praise God. so he's going to give you speed the time you think you have lost by his speed you will cover it that's how god operates in everything he does that's how he operates that's why he commands you to have patience so now god is talking about opening the book and i said judgment is going to begin now, I was talking to you about the prophecy of Joel and the things that must come to pass. You see, I told you one of the things that will come to pass is this. The, God, the God's children or the church is going to be so blessed in these last days. The church now, now say, you know, people go, oh, we're already seeing that blessing. No, you haven't seen it yet. 
See, I'll tell you this truth about everything God does. Satan always comes first. And Satan always comes to confuse your mind. So you run with the little that you've seen and think that is the big thing that God is doing. No, sir. Satan always rushes first. So when you're dealing with fulfilling prophecies, always look out for the hand of Satan. Because when God wants to fulfill prophecies, he will do it by himself. It's not, by, it's not going to be by your sweat. It's not going to be by your sweat. He will fulfill his word clean and clear for you. Now then, so what he told Joel, what Joel prophesied, is that God's children will grow to that point where he says, my people shall never be ashamed. And I remember last, last week, Friday, during our program, I was sharing with them. I said, one of the, the important prophecies that must be fulfilled is the prof promise God made to Abraham. And what's that promise? He told Abraham, through your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed through your seed speaking to abraham so through abraham's seed all the families of the earth will be blessed and then i took them through the journey god promised abraham and we all know you see as he started walking with abraham god introduced titan to abraham Yes. Now, when I say tithing to Abraham, he taught Abraham how to tithe to God. Now, there is this um, confusion that I've, I've seen, you know, Bible scholars, when it comes to tithing. And you've, you've heard me several times, I've talked about this. But recently, there is this um, um, idea that milk. Melchizedek or Melchizedek, however you call it, was a physical king that lived on earth. Now, I, I was doing some rich research recently and I think I found where they got that from. But then, while, see, the, the best teacher is always the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know how to relate with the Holy Spirit, you're going to have this challenge. So, now, some people say, oh, Melchizedek was Shem. Now, you remember Shem, Noah's son. And, and, and some people say, oh, he was a king that existed around that time. Now, there is a, a bit of confusion about who Melchizedek was in the scriptures. But then when you go to the New Testament, and Hebrews, when Paul was talking about him, Paul gave a description of him and said something about him. I think I would like to show you because this is very, very important. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 7. Now it says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Now he went on, now Paul went on to say, now I want you to understand something. Uh, in the New Testament, there were two things they operated with. Now, they operated with knowledge. Now, these are Jewish people. So, they operated with knowledge. When I mean knowledge, um, things handed down, stories, materials handed down to them. And secondly, they function by revelation, spiritual revelation. So, you have to know how to merge both to have an understanding. Now, the beauty of it is today, we have revelation the spirit of revelation is in us so we have to trust the holy spirit in us to even explain what paul was talking about in some of this these cases now that will help you 
um, merge the narrated story with the actual events. For example, in this one now. So now Paul says, this king of Salem was without father, without mother, without genealogy. Now, what made Paul say this? I want you to think, what made the writer, some people say he, Paul didn't write the book of Hebrew, whoever wrote it, what made the writer say this? That this man, he was king of righteousness and then he was king of peace. He was without father, he was without mother. Then he says he was without genealogy. So now they couldn't trace where this man came from. Who is his father? They don't know. Yet he showed up as the king of Salem. So they say he was the king of old Jerusalem. Now, but then they have a, there's a problem. You cannot trace where that old Jerusalem was. See? Okay. Now, it says, Without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the son of God, remains a priest continually. Now, the, the writer, I'm careful not to say Paul, so, so you do, I don't get some people offended, but I believe the, the, the writing sounds so much, the writer sounds so much like Apostle Paul. Now he says, he says he has no genealogy, he has no beginning of this, no end of life. So there is no material that tells everybody that existed there is, you can tell that this one gave birth to this one and he became a king. See, when you read the, the, the stories of the Old Testament and the genealogy of men, see? Now, in their day, I want you to remember something. In their day, you can actually trace everybody on the earth. Now, in, in the days of Abraham, you can actually trace every human being on the earth. Because if you remember, every other person had been destroyed by the flood so everybody died apart from noah his sons and their wives so now the earth population began to expand with noah and his family and it wasn't so long that abraham lived so in the days of abraham noah was still alive so noah was still alive i'm saying that to tell you that you can still trace everybody but then when Abraham was coming from the slaughter of the kings, he met this man who was introduced as king of Salem. But then nobody knew where he came from. Nobody can tell where he was really ruling. And okay, who's his father? Did anybody get so there is no record? So here he says, but made like the son of God. Why did he say that? He knew that this man showed up. He showed up. Now I've told you this before. In conclusion, Melchizedek was the word of God that was made flesh simple so he was a man that showed up now you see another thing you need to know about even some literal writers is now the evidence they have at the moment of their writing is what they are going to go with now because they didn't see this man suddenly appear now of course you also know these are stories that were told so you see this man who just appeared or or you don't know where he appeared from so you're careful to say, this is who he is. Now, it takes one, people who do some investigation, and they're like, where was this man really from? Like I said, in their days, the population of the world can be accounted for, not like today. The population of the earth could be accounted for. So Melchizedek was the manifestation of God. He was the word of God that became flesh. What do you mean the word of God that became flesh? God transformed his word into a human being. He wasn't born on earth. But he existed for that purpose. To teach Abraham 
what he is going to teach. He actually came to bless Abraham because God needed someone beyond the dreams that Abraham has received, beyond the words he has heard. God needed to confirm his blessing with Abraham. God needed to do it. So how did God do it? He came down. His word became flesh like a man and he got into a covenant with Abraham. You see that? Now, that was normal in those days. See, men, when you read your Bible, men had several experiences. Jacob would meet angels on the way. He would meet a troop on the way. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Now, those were not people who existed on earth. They showed up, did their thing, and they left. So Melchizedek was the manifestation of the word of God in flesh. I need you to understand that. And I'm, tomorrow, I'm going to go into what I was talking about, about this thing that must happen on the earth. Praise God, because my time is up. Father, thank you. Your word is working in us bringing us revelation and understanding in the name of the lord jesus christ amen praise god i'll see you tomorrow god bless you bye